Hello, this is John from Coda Bears. Today I'll be covering DFS, what it is and what it's good for. What is DFS? Distributed File Services. DFS allows organizations using a Windows Server environment to group file shares as well as replicate folders between servers. DFS is broken down into two different functions, namespaces and replication. These can be used separately or together. A namespace is a grouping of shared folders on multiple servers into logical namespaces. This appears as a single shared folder with subfolders. Shared folders can be located in multiple sites, multiple servers. Replication the replication engine synchronizes folders on multiple servers. This can be used across a local or wide area network connection. And this only updates portions of files that have changed. What is required for DFS? You must be using Windows Server 2008 or later. All servers must be in the same Active Directory forest for replication to work. The Active Directory schema must be at least Server 2003 R2 or newer. DFS role must be installed on all servers that will be members of the group. The DFS management snap-in must be on a non-core version of Windows Server, so it must have the desktop environment installed. Replicated folders must be on NTFS formatted volumes. First you're going to install the DFS role using the add roles and features wizard. The minimum requirements are the DFS management tools that you can install and you need file server, DFS namespaces, and DFS replication. When you go to the DFS management console, this is where you can do all the work to add namespaces and replication groups. To add a namespace, you're going to click New Namespace, and it'll start up a wizard where you can give it a name and edit the settings to set up a local path for the shared folder, and then you can set up permissions for the shared folder. For the namespaces, you have two options. You can do a domain-based namespace, which is going to put the root of the namespace under the domain. So in this case, we have Coda Bears local for the domain, and then my namespace is lunch and learn. Or you can do a standalone namespace that is actually stored on a single server, and you access that namespace using the server path instead of the domain. To create replication, you hit New Replication Group, and you get a wizard. You can create a name and give it a description, and it's going to be on the domain. And then you're going to add your replication members, which are the servers that are going to have the replicated files. There's some different topologies. Generally, you're going to use Full Mesh where each member replicates with the other members in the group. And you can set the schedule and the bandwidth. In this case we're going to set full bandwidth so that it can use up all of the bandwidth on the network between the two servers. You're going to set your primary member, which in this case I've set to file server 1, and then you set up the local path of the folder you're going to replicate. In this case, I'm replicating a logs file. And I'm going to use the name based on what the folder name is. Or you can give it a custom name and call it whatever you want. Then you're going to add your second member. And then you need to browse to the server for your second member and pick the file or make a new folder where the primary server is going to replicate to. 
and then you can set up the schedule. In this case, we're using full bandwidth, and it's across the board, 24 hours a day, every day. You can change that if you want so that it only replicates on certain days during certain periods of time. And here you can see the staging path. That is where the server stores versions of the file that it is going to be replicating. And you can set the quota for how big that path can get before it needs to dump all of those files. So now you see if I go to my network and put in my domain path to my shares namespace, and you can see all of the folders that are under that namespace, Code of Bearers, Downloads, Epicor, Vmug. You can also see if I browse to the individual server members, I have the same folder paths. These have properly replicated. And DFS can be a very powerful tool. It can be problematic with very large files. This is where that quota comes into play. If the quota is too small, larger files will have issue being replicated. You want to set the replication schedule to fit your needs so that certain files don't get locked out when they need to be used because they're being replicated. DFS replication is kind of like load balancing for files. The namespaces act a bit like load balancing. And even though you are replicating between two servers, you still need to regularly back up files. The replication is easy to break. Like I said, a large file could cause issue if your quota is set too low, and then the replication may not work, and it may start having all sorts of errors, and then you'll have to go in and figure out what caused the errors and fix it. When you do replication for the first time, the best method is to precede your secondary and any other members of a replication group with the data from your primary server using RoboCopy. Thank you and have a good day.